What was your most memorable failure and how did you deal with it? Thank you. Yeah. Well, we've discussed Dexter many times in the end report um, where I, uh, back in the mid-1990s, I looked at the shoe business in Dexter, Maine and, and decided to pay 400 or so million dollars for something that was destined to go to zero in a few years. And I didn't figure that out. And then on top of that, I gave the purchase price in stock, and I guess that stock would be worth, maybe, I don't know, maybe six or seven billion now. It makes me feel better when the stock goes down because the stupidity gets reduced. Uh, uh, no, nobody, misled, no, nobody misled me on that uh, in any way. I just looked at it and came up with the wrong answer. But I, I would say almost any time we've issued shares, it's been a mistake. Wouldn't you say that, Charlie? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we don't do it much anymore. No. Um, we, we probably could have pushed harder, particularly in the earlier years. We've, we've always been, well, we've had all of our own net worth in the company. We've had all our family's net worth, and we've had all these f friends that came out of our partnership, many of whom put half or more of their net worth with us. And so we have, we've, we've been very, very, very cautious in what we've done. And there probably were times when we, we could have stretched a little and pulled off something quite large that, that uh, we made a mistake looking back. But I wouldn't want to take a 1% chance, you know, of wiping out my Aunt Katie's net worth or something. It just it's just not something in life that, that uh, I could live with. So uh, I would rather be, you know, 100 times too cautious than 1% than too incautious. And that, and that will continue as long as I'm around. But the, people looking at our past would say that we, we missed some big opportunities that, that we understood and could have swung if we'd wanted to go out and borrow more money. Charlie? Well, it's obviously true. If, if we had used the leverage that a lot of successful operators did, Berkshire would be a lot bigger. A lot bigger. A lot bigger. Yeah. And, but we would have been sweating at night. It's crazy to sweat at night. <laughs> Over financial things. <laughs> Over financial things, yes. <laughs> Well, we won't pursue that. Carol? <laughs> Hello. My name is Paula, and I'm from Gainesville, Florida. And I would just like to ask Mr. Buffett, after all these years of interviews and meetings, what is the one question that you've never been asked that you would like to answer now? <laughs> Well, I can think of the question I haven't been asked, but I'm not sure I want to answer it now. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, I, I think I've been asked almost all of them, and, um, and many, uh, many of them time after time after time. Charlie, do you have anything that you're just dying to be asked? Well, Ms. Lady will first tell us the worst thing she ever did in her life. <laughs> <laughs> Paulo, I wish we could help you. If you got another question you'd like to throw at us, yeah. I could I could ask you another question. Good. Can I buy you lunch? <laughs> I think she's talking to you, Charlie. <laughs> he always wins. Well, you I'm saw so him in the movie. He always gets the girl. Yeah, I'm so heavily involved with those girls in the movie that I just don't have room on my list. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Yeah. Station nine. Better have some fudge, uh, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> very exciting. Yeah, what? Very exciting to see my superstars here. I'm Leo, a value investor from China and a loyal fan of you and Charlie. Many Chinese investors feel all kinds of performance pressure, question, and even laughing at value investing. Many also believe that value investing does not apply to China. 
where the stock market just doubled over the last six months. I would like to ask Mr. Buffett, do you think value investment can be wildly applied in all markets or just for material markets just as the ones in the United States? Do you have any suggestions for value investors to hold against pressure and to be much happy? Thank you. Okay, I'm not sure I got all of it, but Charlie will help me. I certainly think investment principles do not stop at borders. Uh, so if I were uh, investing in China or, or any place else, India, UK, Germany, uh, I, would, I, would, I would apply exactly the same sort of principles that I learned from the intelligent investor. I would think of, I would think of stocks as a small piece of a business. I would think of investment fluctuations being there to benefit me rather than to hurt me. Uh, and I would uh, try to focus my attention on businesses that I thought, where I thought I understood the competitive advantage they had and where they would, what they would look like in five or 10 years. So I don't, think, I don't think I would change the principles at all. I'm not sure I got all of the questions. Char maybe Charlie can elaborate on the rest. Well, the Chinese have a history of being very entrepreneurial and of gambling very heavily when they have the opportunity. And it has created great volatility in the Chinese stock markets. And when things get bouncy and prosperous like our internet craze here in the United States, China looks a lot like Silicon Valley. I think China would be way better to be more value investor minded and less absorbed in waves of speculation. So I think if they the more China copies the way Berkshire operates, I think the better it will be for China. Yeah, there's a, there's a certain irony in that we, will, we would do the best over decades if we operated in a market where people operated very foolishly. And the more people respond to short-term events and exaggerated things or anything that causes people to get wildly enthusiastically enthusiastic or wildly depressed actually is what allows people to make lots of money in securities and on the other hand it's not the greatest thing for a society and uh, Charlie and I have benefited enormously by the fact that over a 50-year period there have been a few periods probably the most extraordinary being 1973 and 74 where you could buy stocks unbelievably cheap, cheaper than happened in 2008 and 2009. And, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to have that much volatility in the market, but humans behave the way humans behave, and they're going to continue to behave that way in the next 50 years. I mean, if you're a young investor and you, you can sort of stand back and value stocks as businesses and invest when things are very cheap, no matter what anybody is saying on television or what you're reading, and perhaps, if you wish, sell when people get terribly enthused, it is really not a, a very tough intellectual game. It's, a very, it's, a, it's an easy game if you can control your emotions. And as, China, as Charlie says, that he thinks, I, we've talked about it a little bit, that the Chinese market may be more there may be more speculative influences in it even than in the United States because it's a relatively new development and it may lend itself to greater extremes. And that should produce great opportunities. Charlie? Yeah, well, there's, there are great opportunities for excess and, yeah. and nasty contractions after unnatural boom, booms and so on. Uh, I, I think China is, is wise to dampen the speculative booms, and, to, and I think the Chinese, I don't think the value investing will ever go out of style. Who in the hell doesn't want value when you buy something? How can there be anything else that makes any sense except value investing? It never gets that popular, though. <laughs> People are looking for an easier way, yeah. and, and that's a mistake. It looks easier, but in fact, it's harder. And there's a lot of misery to be obtained by misusing stocks. Yeah. 
Nobody buys a farm that make a lot of money next week or next month, or they buy it, get an apartment house. They, they buy it based on what they think the long-term future is. And if they, if they get a, if they make a reasoned calculation of that and the purchase price looks attractive, they buy it. And then they don't get a quote on it every day or every week or every month or even every year. And that's probably a better way to look at stocks. Carol?